Hey guys, this is James from Swim Bike Run Chesterfield, and today I'm going to show you a tutorial on how to change your own flat. So uh, first things first, I have a normal tube and tire here. I'm going to go ahead and let out all the air. It's that sound we don't like to hear on the side of the road um, when it happens, uh, but we'll pretend I'm getting a flat. So the first thing um, that we'll notice is, uh, and it depends on what uh, generation wheel you have, but we may notice that the side of our tire doesn't really wanna come off the side of the rim. Um, that's because a lot of modern wheels are tubeless compatible. Um, so if we look at the side here, me just pulling the, the tire to the side, it doesn't wanna make that rim show. And that's because this is the rim here without a tire. We see we have a channel right down the center and two ledges on each side. Those ledges hold that tire up there really tight. So we really have to make sure before we start this changing to process that we get it off of that ledge. So uh, we'll even hear a sound. We'll see if it makes a noise. Yeah, that noise there, it's totally normal. That's that bead of the tire, which is the edge of the tire coming off of those shelves. So you have to go all the way around, pull that tire off of the edge. Again, all the way around, you're gonna have a really hard time. So do that first. Okay, uh, second step is to get your Fix-A-Flat kit, which hopefully you guys are all riding with. Uh, Fix-A-Flat kit is a tire lever, a CO2, an inflator, and a spare tube. If you don't have these three, you're gonna be in trouble. So first we're gonna grab our tire lever. Um, I like to put the wheel perpendicular to me. I'm gonna hold the tire lever like this. So this spoon side here, that's going to help grab the tire up outside of the rim. So we'll do that now, just like this. And then I like doing a push-pull method. So I'm gonna really push with the tire lever and hold this rim here. I'm gonna push it, and you'll see that it slowly pulls out. But what you're seeing though is that sometimes the tire bead wants to actually go right back down into the rim. So as I continue to do it, I'm gonna hold the bead of the tire out so that it doesn't keep creeping back in and once you got about eight inches or so, it gets really easy. Perfect. So uh, the number one rule here in this part is to make sure you only take one side of the tire off. It just makes things really nice and easy going forward. I'm going to now grab inside the belly of the tire here and pull the tube out. And I'm going to end at the part of the rim that has the valve. Once I get to that part here, I'm gonna pull the tire over the rim at the top. That's gonna give us all this room now and I can pull the valve straight out of the hole on the top of the rim, okay? So again, luckily, this isn't really a flat tube, so I'm just gonna reuse this one again, but I'm gonna let more air out because there's a really, really important step that we have when we take out our fresh tube. So I wanna take our fresh tube and make sure that it's not super limp. A limp tube is just isn't very easy to work with when we go to put it back inside of the tire. So we'll just unscrew the valve and just blow it up with our mouth just a little bit, just to give it shape. I will kind of hold the tube out like this to allow that air to go in. And then I'm gonna very carefully spin the valve here, which sometimes it's hard to do without letting air out, but we're gonna do our best. Perfect, so about that much air is all you need. So now we'll keep the wheel parallel to us. I'm gonna grab the valve, and again, remember, I have the hole of the rim right at the very, very top. I'm gonna drop the center of this tube. If you look at where my shoes are and where the tire tube is, I'm gonna drop that tube right inside the belly of the tire. And then I'm gonna go up to the top of the rim here. I'm gonna pull that tire back and just drop that valve right into where the rim, okay? So now I'm gonna do the reverse of what I did before. I'm gonna pull the tire up over that tube, okay? And the reason why I dropped the part of the tube down there is because we want the tube to be pretty even all the way around, so it kind of does a bit of that for us already. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tuck this into the belly of the tire all the way around. Um, we're gonna wanna make sure we don't have any wrinkled spots. That's really why we blow it up with our mouth so it doesn't wrinkle itself inside. So I'm just gonna keep following it all the way around. So now you can see uh, the tube is fully tucked into the belly of the tire there. 
and now I'm gonna start the opposite process that I started with the tire lever, okay? So this process will end with a tire lever, potentially. I'm gonna show you how to do it with your hand as well, but at the beginning, we're just gonna use our hands. So um, again, I'm just tucking this bead right back inside the rim, and I'm gonna go all the way around. Um, I don't normally like to end at the valve. Sometimes the valve can get in the way, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the valve part over first. This is pretty easy until we get to the valve, the last eight inches or so, and then it gets a little bit more difficult. So what's happening here is in order to get that bead of the tire up over this part of the rim, it's gonna go through a really, really tight process first before it gets easier. So um, what we're gonna do is just like before, I'm gonna make sure that both sides of the tire are pulled off of the shelf. Um, that shelf makes everything tighter than it needs to be. So pulling it down to the shelf is gonna make sure we have it as loose as possible. And then I'm gonna get down to this last part here. So um, a couple ways we can do this. We can then take our tire lever, we can turn it in the opposite way and actually use it to pry the bead over the rim. Um, if we do that, what I want you to do is take the distance that you have left and go a third of that distance and then use that to pry over. If you went toward the right, straight to the middle, it's gonna be far too tight, you won't be able to do it, so go about a third of the distance. Um, the only issue about using a tire lever to pry the tire over is you can't really see what exactly is behind there, and if you might not accidentally grab part of that tube and pinch that tube. So um, do it that way if you have to, definitely give it practice trying it with your hands. Um, again, the way to do it with your hands is to not use your thumbs, the thumbs tire out really quickly. Use the palm of the hand somewhat in a rotating motion like this. So I'm gonna start at each edge and I'm gonna kind of grab and pull until, and you can kind of see here, I've got very little left. Keep kind of getting closer and closer and closer until it comes over, right? That noise was that tight kind of flipping over. Again, that's what kind of makes it so difficult. So now that I'm done, I'm gonna kind of go around the rim and make sure that there's no tube peeking out. I wanna make sure when I pull this rim back, all I see is the bed of the rim, that rim strip there. So I'm gonna kinda of just go around the rim really quick, pulling it to the side. And great, we're all good to uh, put some more air in now. So um, most of us should be carrying a CO2 cartridge and inflator. I've already kinda of put those together. Uh, there are many different models and brands, but the biggest thing is we can remember that we can turn on and off the amount of air that comes in and out. Um, many people ask, is a CO2 cartridge, is this one fill, is this multiple times fill? Remember, a CO2 cartridge is meant to be a once and done. Uh, there still may be CO2 left in there, so it's, it's totally okay if that will, will leak out at the end. We'll probably see that here in a second. So uh, this particular one, I'm just going to, again, remember, I have to open back up the lock ring here, okay? And I'm going to press and firmly hold, similar to if I was just pumping it up with a bike pump. And now on this one, I had the benefit of just being able to undo this dial here and the air is going to come out. You can hear it kind of come out. You can see it spit into. So those noises you hear, totally normal. Again, that's that noise of the tire bead getting back up onto the top of uh, each shelf. Um, so what happens is at some point in time, the pressure inside the CO2 cartridge equals the pressure inside of the tube. It creates an equilibrium and no more air will go in. So when we pull it out, again this, again it may still spit out at you, no big deal. Also, uh, you probably already know, a CO2 cartridge does get really, really cold um, after it's been engaged. So again, nothing that's not normal. Um, this will have more than enough pressure to get you home. Cool, that's a little insight into our fix -a flat class. In our actual fix -a flat class, we go a little bit deeper in a couple areas, but this is a great tutorial just to get you by.